Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Today we have a special guest, Dr. Gary Dunnington. He's the Chairman of General Surgery and Surgical Department at Indiana University. He's been a mentor of mine from early times at USC, and uh, he's been really gracious to give us a talk on a very important topic uh, that he's an expert on, and that's how we can evaluate resident training and resident performance in uh, surgical training. Gary, thanks for being with us, and please go ahead. Thanks very much, and Dr. Cohen, thanks for that introduction. It's really a pleasure to be here and discussing with you something of importance to all of us involved in the training of surgical residents. While much of what I will discuss today as we discuss measuring and improving performance in surgical training will pertain to general surgery residents, the principles are broadly applicable to all surgical specialties, uh, and particularly those in neurosurgery. We begin by discussing the reality of resident evaluation because it's somewhat surprising to find out that 20 to 25 percent of residents have performance problems identified during training. Most of these problems are identified early, but there are real delays in addressing these problems. And probably the most important reason is that our evaluation strategies are poor, and it does a poor job of yielding the diagnosis for these problems. Remediation is often, as we say, penicillin for everything, read more, seldom solves the problem, and most residents complete training with the same problems that were identified early in training. We have recently tried to characterize what we believe these problems are in the resident evaluation process, beginning with most frequent to least frequent, and the most frequent is clearly inadequate sampling of performance, not enough raters, not enough ratings, not enough skills sampled. There are also the inaccuracies due to over-reliance on memory, none of which is better illustrated than the end of rotation evaluation when we try to recollect all of those instances during the last one or two months. There are the hidden performance deficits, the lack of meaningful benchmarks, often hesitancy to act because of brief encounters, and systematic rater error, which we used to believe was a principal problem and is actually probably much less common than some of the others we've identified. One of the questions that's frequently asked of me as a surgical educator is, are surgical residents competent currently? There have been all of the changes with regard to work hours restrictions and a very different environment for training with an increase in the technological demand. Recently in general surgery, 300 ACGME index cases were ranked by program directors according to competency. A were essential. These cases must be performed well by residents completing training, B as they should be, and C were not necessarily. 121 operations were then deemed to be essential components of general surgery training by a majority of program directors. Surprisingly, over half of those essential cases had a mode number of zero when looked at in the American Board of Surgery case profiles. These were cases such as common bile duct exploration, transanal excision, and Whipple, procedures that we believe most residents should be capable of doing once in practice. So the question that obviously was, are surgical residents competent when they finish training? And uh, so it has really created a major issue as we look to the future of training surgeons. It forced uh, Richard Bell, a recent uh, president of one of the major surgical organizations, to ask in a presidential address, why is it that Johnny cannot operate if this is actually the case? And we believe there are principally two reasons that are involved. One is an inadequate experience in residency training, as we've just illustrated by the data. And secondly, an absence of formal assessment of operative skills, something that only is recently coming to the forefront in general surgery, neurosurgery, and many of the other surgery specialties. And that's the precise need for surgical skills training prior to residents arriving in the operating room. In fact, as Lord Kelvin has said, with regard to the evaluation of performance in these settings, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So for the last 15 years or so, our educational research group has been predominantly focused on this issue of evaluating performance of surgical trainees. And so as we look to this, stated otherwise as beyond a better evaluation form, I'm going to touch briefly on these issues of surgical skills performance, team-based performance, how we evaluate performance in the operating room, evaluation of clinical assessment and management, and then speak briefly to an issue of real concern to program directors, and that is 